let's now share with you some of those pictures that were sent to our eyewitness portal. And um, we can begin with this one, which shows an overturned vehicle after an accident on the third mainland bridge here in Lagos State. Our eyewitness reporter is asking road users to be more safety conscious and wants the authorities to step up road safety awareness efforts. Here's one from Edo State, and it shows a trailer with contents scattered along the Auchi Urumi Road. Our eyewitness reporter attributes the accident to the poor state of that road and is calling on the federal government to fix it. From River State comes this image of doctors of the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital who are demanding better welfare. According to our eyewitness reporter, their protest is over alleged part payment of salaries since January. Also from River State is this picture showing part of the railway line between Transamadi and Wuji in Port Harcourt. Our eyewitness reporter is worried that some hooks and screws are no longer in place and is asking the authorities to urgently look into the maintenance of the track to avoid accidents. Thanks a lot for all your pictures. We ask you to keep them coming. As we cross over to Abuja now, here's Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Hello, Ejama. Good to see you as always. Now, first, let's go to Kwara State, where lecturers and workers of the College of Education, Oro, have staged a protest over alleged non-payment of their 14-month salary arrears, accusing the school management of being insensitive to their plight. While the provost of the school could not be reached for his reaction, the state government promised to pay two months of their arrears owed. The College of Education in Oro, in Irepoto, local government area of Kwara State, is one of the three state-owned colleges of education and could be described as the worst hit in terms of non-payment of salaries. Having recently resumed from a strike action, the Congress of the staff met and resolved to protest within the school premises to compel the management to pay them at least two months of what has been owed. <laughs> Our problem is uh, both internal and external. The, the management, the government decided that the management should pay salary through internally generated revenue. And that is the reason why the union keep pressurizing the management. Okay, you have generated enough money. Come and pay our salary through this, uh, through this uh, means. So that's why I said it is both internal and external problem. Since the management seems not too ready to pay and settle part of the salary arrears, the workers picketed the locked their offices, preventing them from gaining access. Reacting to this, the State Commissioner for Tertiary Education, Dr. Amina Ahmed, confirmed that the workers are being owed 14 months salary, but blamed it on the management of the school. But that 8 million naira has been approved to offset three month salary arrears for the workers. All the management staff office that we do the job for the school, their offices we are locked up, and government has not said they are not going to pay. Arrangements are on the pipeline, which we have compiled. We have known how much we are owing each school, and the government is ready to pay them as soon as money comes in. She then announces a ban of union activities. We can't take loss into our hands, even if you are going to embark on anything. There's a due process because they've taken law into their hands, the activities of union and any activities around the school should be suspended for now so that peace will reign. But the suspension of union activities seems not to go down well with the workers as they claim the government cannot exercise such a right. The government is not helping the situation. The government knew what has been happening here. The government is fully aware of our suffering. The government is fully aware of how hardworking the staffers of College of Education are. So if at the 14 months, after waiting tirelessly, sir, 14 months without payments, if you take any step now to, 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 to at least to say something or to react, we expect the government to support us. We expect them to embrace 
it. We are trying them to call them into order to even look into our problem here. But by said telling us they suspend us is something that is unexpected. As the workers of the College of Education Oro await the payment of the two month salary out of the 14 being owed, the senior special assistant on media to the governor, Dr. Muidin Akuridi, in a statement says the governor confirms that over 80 million naira has truly been put aside to offset the salary arrears of the three state-owned colleges of education. All progressive congress in River State in their hundreds, they took to the streets of Port Harcourt, the River State capital, a day after the People's Democratic Party staged a protest on the outcome of the rerun elections in the state. It turned out to be a long walk from the party secretariat to the state headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The protesters, led by the state chairman and other leaders of the party, said they want INEC to take a second look at some of the results declared in the just-concluded polls. The elections in some local government areas were compromised, especially in diverse places in the world. We are even before the elections were and the results were announced. So we have come to formally uh, lay before the national chairman of the commission our protest and to ask that this petition be thoroughly investigated. We are not satisfied with the conduct of certain officers of the Independent Electoral Commission. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has been speaking on what he considers as key to having successful elections in Nigeria. During the commission's review of the recent legislative rerun elections in River State, Professor Yakubu said that the electoral process must be rid of violence. He also emphasized the need for government to set up an elections offenses tribunal, as has been recommended by several committees. Once again, the overwhelming light on the 10th December 2016 elections is the level of violence and thuggery. There were no less than 70, 70 incidents of deliberate obstruction of the electoral process in last Saturday's election. Election duty personnel were harassed, abducted, and physically, physically assaulted. The Commission has documented all these instances of violence and wishes to assure Nigerians that we shall carefully scrutinize them and take appropriate action under the law as well as our guidelines and regulations. Because the key to successful elections lies in finding solutions to meet the violence in our elections. And this cannot be allowed to go without remedial action. We have been making this point that any law, any nation whose laws are violated with impunity and nothing happens is doomed. So go by the recommendations of the U.S. Commission, go by the recommendations of the Lemu Committee, set up the Electoral Offenses Commission and Tribunal to which every violator of our electoral laws is subjected, including staff of the commission, not just people in the field. For as long as that is done, we will continue to do what we can within the law. We will make some movements, but it will not translate to the kind of radical change that we all expect in the prosecution of electoral offenders. Well, let's rejoin our Lagos studio where Ijoma is standing by. Ijoma. Thanks a lot, Ibrahim. And with the rerun elections in River State over, it's time to concentrate on governance. And that's according to the state governor, Nyesom Wike, who appears to be satisfied with the pace of work on the Port Harcourt Resort Center project. He was speaking during an inspection of the project, referred to as the first of its kind in the state and the country. He was accompanied by the former acting chairman of the PDP, Prince Uche Secondus, and the Edo State's PDP chairman, Dan Obi. What is more satisfactory here is that it's going to turn out, of course, not only the first pack, but the first of its kind. 
in the entire Africa where you have a golf course down to the stream, down to the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't think we are witness this anywhere. So one is quite satisfied with what Joseph Baker is doing. And like I said, during our well, we have our 50th uh, year celebration, our Jubilee celebration. It will be part of what we are going to commission and to showcase that River States has come of age and that there are certain recreational centers that we do not have anywhere in the, it's, it's in, it's in the states. So it will create revenue, it will be like a tourist uh, attraction. The River State Governor, Nyesom Wike. When the news at 10 returns, the Debt Management Office defends federal government's plan to borrow 2.36 trillion naira to fund the 2017 budget deficit. That would be on business. Please stay with us.